Okay, so in this tutorial, I want to have a look at selection. One of the kind of more challenging things that we need to try and do inside of um, uh, when we're using uh, Python inside of Maya is uh, selecting either selecting particular objects in our scene or just retrieving what objects are selected. So we'll start off with this with the scenario where what we want to do is just apply uh, uh, our Python commands to. Uh, uh, objects that have been selected in our scene as opposed to all of them. So here I've got a scene here which I've just created using Python uh, and you can see I, I haven't bothered naming anything it's so so um, uh, Maya's just put the default names on there uh, p cube 1 to 10 okay um, great so um, what I need to do is find out what is selected uh, uh, what what I want to do is find out what I've got selected first. So I'm just going to go uh, my selection. So this is just going to be a variable. I could call this variable anything I want, okay? But in here, we're going to store a list of the objects that are selected, okay? So I'm just going to go equals CMDS. So obviously, this is my first line. Anything we do in Python, this is typically your first line, okay? I um, might actually just try and dock that. Can I dock it? God, you're going to let me dock. Yeah. Fabo. Okay. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just try and get a bit more screen real estate. Yeah, let's get rid of that. That looks better. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, so, um, okay, so uh, I'm going to go, uh, there's a command called ls. This is a really useful command and is well worth looking up in the reference and kind of understanding this command in a bit more detail. But uh, if I, inside here, I can pass a parameter called selection. So this is a parameter I'm passing to it. Uh, equals true. Okay, so basically what I'm saying here is um, uh, the list of items. So I'm going commands list uh, list items. Okay, basically it's listing nodes, stuff in your scene, right? Okay, so command list things. Okay, and and by passing this, we're saying only list what is selected. Okay, uh, so great. Um, uh, let's. Uh, I'm just going to go print uh, my selection. I've got a feeling this isn't going to give us anything useful. I might have to put this into a loop, but we'll see what happens. So select a couple of objects. Let's run this. Okay, and you can see here we've got p cube six, p cube five. So it's given us a list, and it's listed the two objects that we've got selected. Okay, and indeed you can see here p cube five, p cube six. Those are the ones selected. And then just to prove it, here I'll go select some different ones and run the command again. There we go. P cube four, uh, p cube two. Okay. Uh, an important concept to realize is that even if you select one object, so I'm going to run this now. So even if I select one object, this one object is returned inside a list. Okay. So if I want to access that object, I need to kind of go, you know, I can't just go, uh, you know, I've got one object selected that my selection is still referring to a list. If I want to get to the object, then I've got to go, uh, uh, again, I can call it whatever I want. I'm just going to call it my object, but again, I could, it's just a variable. Uh, so I go my object equals, in fact, just, let's just put this just for neatness. I'm just going to put it after this print command here. My object equals, um, oh, notice I'm doing really slack print commands here. Uh, you wouldn't get away with this in Python 3. So just note if you go up to, um, if um, uh, if uh, Maya does go to Python 3, which I'm kind of anticipating to happen at some point, uh, this won't work. So uh, I'm being naughty, and you should put your print commands in brackets like that. So that's Python 3 proof, okay? Um, I think everything else I'm doing will be fine. I've just, that, so I just spotted that. Okay, I digress. Back to my object. So what I want to do is I want to go my object equals my selection uh, 0. OK, one of the things I don't really like about this editor is that it doesn't really kind of prompt you and help you with um, uh, variable names. You know, I've created the variable there. Most editors would kind of uh, do like a keyboard assist or like, a, you know, you know what I mean? It would automatically start, you know, identifying the variable that you're doing uh, like some, with a, like an input assistance there. Um, this doesn't do that. So I find that frustrating. Just thought I'd share that. Uh, just uh, especially like I'm really bad at typing and I type the wrong thing, so I, I keep getting caught out when I use this editor. But hey, this is the way it is. Right, let's run it. Uh, so you can see. Uh, oh, sorry, I should print off my object, shouldn't I? Go print. And I'm going to try and do it correctly now. So I've pointed out my mistake. Kaboom. Okay. So you can see here I'm printing off uh, uh, my selection. That's this bit here. Da -da -da. Um, uh, and then here I'm printing off. 
uh, my object okay and so this looks like a very subtle difference uh, but if I try and run like a move command or a scale command on my selection it will not work because it's a list not an object okay uh, whereas I try and run a move command or a scale command on my object it will work okay so that's really important to understand okay so let's imagine I want to go and scale up um, uh, uh, I want to scale up the objects that I've selected. Okay, so I want to do a loop and loop through all the objects that I've got selected. So I can go four, and I'm just going to go obj. Again, this is just a variable name that I'm specifying here. Okay, uh, and I'm just going to go in uh, my selection. Okay, okay. So for every object in my selection, loop through, and every time, uh, and, and for every uh, every loop, every time it loops. OBJ will refer to, <clears throat> you know, a particular object that's been selected. Hope that kind of makes sense. Uh, just show you that if I just go print uh, OBJ. In fact, I'm just going to go print my selection as well, uh, just so we can kind of see that. Uh, let's just try that out. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to select a couple of items now. Uh, Obviously, I can select more than two, uh, but you can see uh, the print my selection bit is this one here. So it's printed off the entire list and you can see it's looping through and printing off uh, each individual one inside this loop. So this is what we're getting. It's looping through and it's printing off every object there inside the list. Brilliant. OK, so now what we can do is we've got this, you know, object uh, variable that conveniently um, uh, conveniently points to each object in our list as we go through the list. Brilliant. Uh, we can use that to apply a scale. So I can just go uh, cd uh, cmds dot scale, uh, and I'm just going to go hey uh, two two two, and I'm just going to go obj. Right. Let's do that. Uh, so you'll see that the two that are selected uh, will scale up by um, two in each dimension. Okay, so let's imagine now what I want to do is rather than uh, just work with what the user has selected in the scene, uh, um, what if I actually just want to actually select a particular object myself, okay? So we can do that. Uh, what we can do is rather than going uh, selection equals true, we can actually specify the object that we want to select, okay? Uh, so I'm going to go P cube. I'm just going to select, uh, I'll go, go P cube 7, okay? So obviously I'm using a string, and I'm going to specify P cube 7. Let's do that. Kaboom. OK, um, now I uh, now uh, you can see in here we've ran it and you can see that it has selected P cube seven. It hasn't actually made that selection live in the viewer. Now, uh, I believe in the documentation, we can specify and tell it to do that if we want it to. Uh, it's just does, it, it doesn't actually by de default update the document, uh, the actual view. OK, Um uh, yeah, I've done a load of digging, and uh, actually, if we want to make that selection live, I'm going to use a completely. I'm going to use another command uh, as well. So, uh, I'm still doing my selection. I'm storing the selection into here. Remember, all this is doing is creating a list. This isn't actually affecting the selection on the screen. If I want to affect the selection on the screen, we have a different command called um, cmds dot selection, and you can look that up. But that affects the actual selection inside of uh, Maya. Um, uh, a fact, it's not called selection. I think it's just called select. There we go. Great. Uh, and all I've got to do is pass my selection to uh, Maya. Let's try that. So if I run that now, you'll see. There we are. And we've made that selection of P cube 7 live. Okay. Uh, other things we can do as well is we could put a wild card in here and say, hey, I want to select everything that just starts with P cube. Okay. So I'll just put a star on here and go. Boom, everything that starts with a P cube, okay? Uh, we can also actually do, um, if you go into the documentation, let's have a look if I've got that open in here. Uh, so this is the selection documentation. I'm going to LS. Here we are. This is the LS documentation. So this is the LS documentation here. Uh, if I go and scroll down here, what you'll see is... Um, there's loads and loads of parameters we can pass to this thing. This, this looks fairly daunting, and you can have a look at the examples here. But the key thing I wanted to highlight to you is we can actually select based on the type of object. So I can say, hey, I want to select all the lights in my scene. OK, or um, I want to select all the I'm trying to think of a different type of object. 
I want to select all the textures in my scene. I want to select, uh, I'm going to go to textures, uh, so this will be all the texture nodes in my scene, yeah? Uh, I might want to select all the objects in my scene, okay? Uh, if I want to select all the objects in the scene, um, then I have to specify, uh, remember, all our objects, again, I'm going to go to uh, Windows, Modeling, uh, General Editors, Hypergraph Hierarchy, here we go. Uh, in fact, actually, I might just go Windows Editors, Hypergraph Connections, here we go. Um, so you, all you're, what you'll see is um, uh, all of these are basically, uh, these are basically transform nodes, okay? So this is the shape, okay? So you can imagine for each of these, we've got a shape, okay? And we've got a transform node, okay? Uh, in fact, actually, sorry, this is the transform node here, isn't it? Yes, okay? So for each object, each object is related to a transform node, okay? So the object, that's the bit that's got all the bits of information about the vertices and, and, and how the edges connect the vertices and the faces connect the edges and blah, blah, blah to create the mesh. Um, uh, that's what that contains. But the transform object is what specifies where it is on the screen. So, sorry, in your scene. So where is it on your scene? What rotation is applied to it? Um, uh, what uh, scale is applied to it? Blah, blah, blah. So if we're going to... Uh, um, so actually, uh, anything on our scene, any kind of uh, visible thing on our scene, has to have a transform object uh, uh, applied to it, okay? And typically, when you're manipulating it, you're not going to be manipulating it through the shape node, Okay, you're going to be manipulating it through the transform node. Okay, and indeed, when you look in the outliner, it's the names of the transform nodes that you see. Okay, so just keep that in your mind. Whenever you're selecting an object or manipulating an object, typically what you're doing is not actually manipulating the object, you are manipulating the transform node. Okay, uh, which is used to put that object in the scene. Brilliant. So, with that in mind, what we want to do is we want to select, if you want to, we might want to list all the transform nodes in our scene, i.e. every single object in our scene, okay? So I can just do that by going uh, transform equals true, okay? Let's have a look if that works. Uh, oh, there's a slight error there. Uh, I might just go back to the documentation, check whether I've got that right. Uh, where are we? Transforms, so I'm going to put an S on the end. There we are. Okay. Ooh. Boom. So that's listed every single transform node in there. And notice how it's also listing uh, our our kind of default cameras that we have for our perspective, top, front, and side views. It's selecting everything. You can see that in the selection. Here's front, yeah, uh, uh, side views, etc., etc. So this selects everything uh, uh, that has a, a transform node applied to it. Okay. Uh, we can, if we want to, just select, have everything in our scene selected. So we can just go, okay. Uh, I can just go like this. Uh, if I don't specify anything, I think you'll just select everything in our scene. Let's try that. So you can see here now, it's specified everything in our scene. Uh, okay, this looks rather long. I might actually just do a, like a, a quick loop. Uh, so uh, for uh, uh, OBJ, I'll keep calling it OBJ. I'll call it O. Oh, I'll call it OBJ in uh, my selection. Print go let's get rid of that print and let's run it kaboom and you can see there's a massive thing and so it's printing off look you see it's printing off the transform node uh it's printing off the shape node uh uh it's printing off uh the the poly cube node so this will be the primitive that created what was used that was specified to create the shape node in the first place so it's, it's basically printing off every node in our scene and this is quite useful actually if you ever want to just look through your scene and get an idea of what's in there there's a lot of stuff that's in there by default as well uh, and so sometimes I'll use this you know uh, just to kind of really kind of dig into what's in my scene and it kind of helps me write my scripts uh, sometimes yeah so that's quite useful so hopefully that's kind of giving you uh, a good start on uh, selection